Hi there, ladies and gentlemen, Jake from GD Honey Acres here. It is the first day of beekeeping of 2024, and I'm excited for it. And as you can see, I just got into this hive. Did a real quick look down in there. There's a lot of population currently, which is good. It's about, I'd say, 79 degrees right now, which is pretty warm. But here's the thing, it's going to be a lot warmer tomorrow. It's going to be 90s tomorrow here in Nebraska. And I would say we are officially into spring. The cold weather is pretty well gone. It's going to dip down in the 70s next week. But I'd say bye to the highs of the 50s. We're going to be in the 60s and the 70s and higher from here on out. And I'm excited for it. So right away, I went ahead and took off my Vivaldi board. Got the burlap out, that spacer off that you saw from last season. The sugar... Went ahead and just flip that out onto the ground. That'll disappear over time. Bees will keep eating that granulated sugar. Ants will get on it, whatever. Rain will make it disappear. But I went ahead and threw a super on. Why did I throw a super on? I threw a super on for a couple reasons. One, I want to give them extra space for when it gets hot. That way they have room inside their colonies to expand. I also want to make sure that they have room for the queen to lay in there. I don't want them pulling in so much nectar that they make the queen nectar bound. Right now, all of our hen bit is in bloom and there are literal fields of purple out there. If you go to Nebraska through the lens on Facebook, you'll see all the purple and people talking about hen bit. Personally, I love it. It's not a weed to me. It's great for our pollinators. It's a great cover crop for all the fields to keep the dirt in the ground. All that good stuff. So that's one reason. So, well, actually, I told you a couple already. One, allow for expansion. Two, allow for them to not be nectar bound. Gives them a place to store honey. Or, sorry, nectar. And three, I'm hoping to get an early start on the flow. What is the flow? The flow is when all the plants in springtime, we're going to try to catch the spring flow here because there's, a lot of food still left over, as you can tell by the amount of sugar that was left in the top of this one. This is an extremely strong hive. They had a lot of food stores going into winter. All the others did as well, and every colony is booming right now from what I could see. So that tells me they still got a lot of food in there. I pulled a couple frames. You can still see capped honey, which is good. Now the boxes that I just put on, there's still some honey from last fall in there that are capped. So I'm not just putting totally empty frames in. They should eat through that if they go into a dry spell with the flow. We'll probably grab a couple of supers that are totally empty and get them put on as well on all of these girls. So what are reasons that I get on ahead and put the super on? Thermal expansion so they have room to expand to try to keep their hive at a more constant temperature, regulate it better. Two, allow for it to not get nectar bound, that way the queen has room to lay. And three, I'm trying to catch that honey flow. See, the thing is, I ran out of honey over winter and I've got people begging for more honey. So I'm hoping that we have a successful season this year. All the moisture we got over winter will help our spring flowering plants to thrive and our girls will capitalize on it. All right, I'm gonna keep working and uh, I'll see you at the end of the video. All right, I just opened up this hive and I saw something I wanted to point out to y'all. They created a lot of bird comb here. Why'd that happen? Well, they have a big old open space here from when they ate away their sugar. The problem with this bird comb is I do see larva in the comb that's open here. So I need to look in this and make sure there's no queen before I just cut it off or whatnot. So what I'll probably do I'm going to remove the rest of the sugar, turn this upside down, and smack it down onto that probably. After giving it a quick once over, to make sure there's no queen on it. So go ahead and use your hive tool, break that sugar free, get rid of it. Now let's give a good once over here. We know she's laying because I got pupa on this one. One way to move bees out of your way while you're looking through them, you can blow on them real quick. Kind of give you a good idea. But 
The queen will look different than all of the other bees because she's normally about twice the size. All right. I'm not seeing nothing. Let's go ahead and shake them off here. Easy way to do that, lift up and just drop them on. I see a lot of bees with pollen, which is epic. Quick little spat. Still don't see. Oh, sorry, girl. Got her underneath my finger. She buzzed at me. I see single eggs all over in this comb. That sucks. That really does, because I'm going to get rid of this comb. That's population that we're losing there. Still making sure I'm not seeing a queen. Let's go ahead and get this off. I guess one good thing you can take from it, we know she's in here, we know she's laying. I definitely do not see a queen on these though, but they were just laid. See the entire colony right now, they're all up in these, from like here over up top here. Oh, they're storing nectar too. Show you guys real quick. Let's get to the camera. Look at all that larva. And there's single eggs right in here. So our queen is definitely gonna need space if she's laying clear up there on all that bird comb. So let's get all this bird comb off, add in a couple extra boxes, and close it up. Man, this really sucks we're losing all this larva. Just a whole bunch of larvae being lost right now. And no, they can't, they don't take the larvae out of the uh, cells once they're already growing. They don't do that. So I'm going to add, I'm going to smoke these girls, get them to go down. That's all I use smoke for is just to get them to move out of the way so I don't hurt them. It also gets their mind off of me. So it's a good thing as a, a veteran beekeeper now that I've got so many supers because of situations like that where they're laying in every cell currently. So we got to give them space. All right, back at it. All right, and just like that, we have got these girls set up for spring. You would not believe how amazing every single colony is doing right now. I'm completely blown away by how much population is every single one of these. There's so much so that about every one of them has pretty well burn through all the granulated sugar that we put in last winter. And there's just bees upon bees upon bees in every single frame. So these girls are already doing way better than I could have ever imagine, imagined. It's just, it's blowing me away. Especially since this winter, we had one of the harshest winters we've had in a long time. We're like the last part of December, clear all the way through January. We are in the negative freaking, what is it? Like negative 15 to negative 20 constant with multiple feet of snow to where there was a point where my driveway had six feet of snow in it that I dug out once the skid steer, went to work, come back, the neighbor came with the skid steer and a snow blower attachment on it and uh, blew it all out because it was already four feet deep. It was like this high on me. I couldn't make it down the driveway. And then the next morning, I ended up, couldn't get my skid steer to start, and I had to dig the whole thing out by hand, and we have a driveway that's almost a quarter mile long. Thankfully, Mrs. Jake and my son were staying in town with their grandma, but, oh man, it was nuts. This winter was crazy. It was so darn cold for like a month, month and a half straight, in the negative Fahrenheit, guys, not Celsius, negative like 20 Fahrenheit. It was nuts here. We had snow like you want to believe. 
The only thing I think that helped save these girls was our, excuse me, was our food preparation we did for them in winter. Uh, before winter, we made sure they had enough of their own food stores, the deep and the medium, their brood chamber area here, made sure they had enough food in there for themselves, and we gave them that little bit extra sugar to make sure that they had enough to get through. And then, we also have these walls that are almost six feet tall around the bee yard, a building right here, and a machine shed right here. So they had the protection from the wind that we had as well. Because we had wind coming from the south, we had wind coming from the north, blew the snow in from all the cornfields. So these girls could have been covered in snow like to here, which would have had the entire hives covered in snow, and we would have lost them all. So I'm glad I had the foresight when we first decided to do this, to build these walls. I, I'm completely blown away right now, guys, that these bees are doing so awesome. There's so much population in every one of them. I'm completely comfortable with having double supers on right now. A couple of them, that one in the far corner there, that one's a Saskatraz, and it's got a uh, triple box going on it because they were so packed. Like, they had so many bees going clear across, I couldn't see through any of the frames. Like, normally you can see through, you see gap going through. They got like one or two that are open. Not them. But, get this, they didn't eat all their sugar. They had all their sugar so on top. So one thing I'm noticing about the Saskatraz colonies, I've got two of them, both of them were this way. They are really good at using their food stores in wintertime. They're really good at allocating what they need and not using more than what they need. The others, I've got some Italians right here. These first three, they've got Italian genetics. I'm pretty Italian and I think maybe some Russian to them. They ate through all their sugar pretty much. There are just little clumps left over. This one, this is that swarm colony from last year. I don't know what their genetics are, but they made it through winter and had an extremely strong population. So whatever it is, it's good. I want to keep it going in the bee yard. Sophia still hates me. That's our Russian colony. I mean, obviously they're mixed by now. They're, they're going on fourth, fifth gener, well, fourth, fifth year. I don't know how many, what, like six or seven generation of queens from that colony. So they started out as Russians, but they're obviously Nebraska mutts now. So all of our bees are Nebraska mutts. They're doing great, but we do have Saskatraz traits in at least two of our colonies. And I would love to split those two eventually. Sophia, she's still a double deep for its brood. So I'm hoping within a couple weeks, maybe we could split that deep apart and get another colony going with it. So we're to the single deep, single medium for the brood chambers all around. This is awesome. This has got to be the best start we've ever had to a season. Hopefully God keeps blessing us with moisture and rain and flowers and goodness and glory. Thank you guys for coming along here. Now remember the reason we did the supers, the double supers, the two supers, whatever. Giving them supers right away right now. All our flowers are blooming or starting to bloom. The hen bit's all there, so we need to give them room to expand um to expand their nectar stores in so they don't become nectar bound in the brood chamber because there's so many there's so much population it was it was going to happen soon um we, we want to make sure that queen keeps laying we don't want her nectar bound we're going to get some hot spells we want to give them room to expand and keep working in their colony otherwise what's going to happen is they're going to beard what that means is their the front of the colony is going to look like my face it's going to have a big old beard on it so there's going to be no bees inside the hive working if we give them room to expand get that airflow going they're going to have more population in there working keeping things running third we want to try to catch that spring honey flow our bees are doing great i'm not worried about them not having enough food they're doing awesome we have a lot of nectar coming that i was seeing nectar stores all throughout happening so they're pulling it in this tree's got buds on it our maples blooming it's starting off as a great year I'm going to pray it keeps going like this. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I love y'all. I'm going to pray for your family. Please play, pray for mine. I hope you're doing well whenever you are, wherever you are. Catch you later. I'm out. Bye. <laughs>